Our next speaker is Rajiv Srinivasan, and he has worked for companies such as Bell Labs and Siemens and Sun Microsystems. He is based in Bangalore, and uh, among other things, he teaches at IIM Bangalore as well as IIM Ahmedabad. Uh, but his day job is uh, being a management consultant, and uh, uh, we'd, we'd love to hear what he has to say. Thank you. Thank you, Gunjan. Um, I'm sort of a semi-academic, semi-industry person with an interest in history. So what you're going to hear from me is a little bit different from what all these other guys have been talking about because they've been focusing on uh, uh, real-life examples and so forth. And I want to look at the historical background of invention and innovation in India. First of all, a definition. I claim that an invention is the creation of something that's brand new, that didn't exist before, right? A completely new concept, new product, etc. An innovation, in my opinion, is taking this to market and creating commercial value out of it. This is the definition that I use. I teach a number of courses at uh, various IAMs, and I'll use that as a working definition as we go forward. So, I would like to then contrast a couple of historical factors. One is that um, India was throughout history one of the richest countries in the world. If any of you has read Angus Madison's Economic History of the World, you'll see that from the time frame of roughly 0 CE that he started from to roughly 1600 CE, India was the richest country in the world. And after colonial incursions, uh, our uh, position started deteriorating. So there is a, an interesting question there. What made us so affluent? And I claim that it's because we were inventive and innovative at that time. We created a lot of new ideas and concepts. Not only that, made them highly useful so that there was market value for them. A couple of examples. One is um, the steel known as woods which uh, came out of Indian, forge, Indian uh, uh, steel making companies um, of which there were something like 20,000. This is the best steel in the world and was used for example by crusaders. The, the Muslims were using them against the uh, Christians in the crusades. This steel, it turns out, um, has some extraordinary properties. For instance, if you identify, if you analyze the deep structure of it, it's full of carbon nanotubes. As an example, so there, somehow, people had invented this kind of steel and were able to make tremendous profits out of exporting it. Okay, so there were a number of other examples like this. But today, we're neither very inventive nor very innovative, uh, if you look at it, in the, in the sense that um, uh, we, in the last 50 or 60 years, I'm hard-pressed to point out a single instance of anything of earth-shattering earth impact that has come from any Indian university. And I, I would be delighted to be proved wrong if any of you has a different opinion on this. Therefore, invention has been relatively poor. And obviously, there is little invention. There's not that much opportunity to turn that into brand new innovation. So we end up often copying a bunch of uh, Western models. And I think this is a, a significant problem that uh, we have been running into because what is a model that we copy? The closest model to something that is great success is the Silicon Valley model, right? Where there is a confluence of technology as well as marketing skills as well as finance. And we've not been able to replicate something like this in India and this has been a, a problem. However, my claim is that um, we have had a uh, long history of innovation and invention. Um, for instance, if you look at um, things like um, uh, Panini's grammar, now that was something that was invented 2,500 years ago. But it had to wait until 50 years ago when the first computers were invented for it to become commercially valuable. Similarly, there was a gentleman named Madhava who invented what is erroneously known as the Taylor series 
of uh, what is the infinite series for some trigonometric functions. What happened with uh, Madhava's invention was that it was turned into innovation by the Europeans who were able to use these tables for navigation across the open ocean. And the result was that they were able to go on a spree of colonialism and imperialism, right? So it uh, ended up being a negative innovation for us. So my assertion here is that unfortunately we're not pursuing the kinds of innovation that take advantage of our potential competitive advantages.